I'm on the human. I'm on the human. I'm on the human. I'm on the human. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sports Talk. I am your host, like always, Zach Barnett. I have another special guest with me today. And I don't think he needs any introduction, but my special guest, he played football at the University of Kansas State. He played tight end for the team. Took his talents to the NFL. He was an undrafted rookie. He was a part of many football teams in the NFL. But my special guest, his name is Jaron Mastrud. Stay tuned for the interview. Brought to you by Vane Protective Gear and Marcus Ogden, inspiring others to take accountability. So, just uh, tell me a little bit about your story, man. From that. Uh... From uh, from your childhood, what made you get into football, man? What made me get into football? Well, my dad was a longtime football coach, so I always was around the game ever since I was born. He coached, shoot, ever. I mean, yeah, ever since I was born, he coached right when he finished college and just finished coaching about what was it? Eight years ago. So always was around the game, had a lot of po positive influences around me. A lot of the other coaches he worked with were really good coaches, worked with a lot of really good players. They won a lot of state championships. So I saw the game and I saw what it was like to have fun with it and win and move on to college and play after high school. So it just made me want to do the same. Yes, sir. So uh, <laughs> going from Southridge, correct? To yes. Kansas State, correct? Yes. How was yes. That, how was that transition for you, man? That was quite the transition. Um, my mom's side of the family is actually from Nebraska, and I felt like you know it's not not like I'm leaving the country or going anywhere that different. But when <laughs> I got out there, it was a little different than I was accustomed to. Um, but for the better, I really felt at home. Everyone was very welcoming. Uh, I went out there knowing nobody. So going from a place where, you know, I played multiple sports, knew a lot of different people, have a brother and a sister, and knew, knew a lot of their friends, their parents, and then just going out to somewhere where you know nobody was definitely a big change. But over the summer, the first summer I was there, uh, you know, meeting all the other guys that were coming in as well, going through the same thing, uh, just created a quick bond with them, and then, you know, got right into playing right away as a freshman, and Never looked back and, you know, kind of felt at home and made that transition really easy. Yes, sir. So um, um, among your time with uh, Kansas State, the the players and the coaches that had the most impact on you as a person and player, who would they – who were they? It, I would say – well, the head coach, Coach Prince, definitely had a big impact on me because – Ultimately, he's the one deciding, you know, to offer me a scholarship, uh, being the head coach. So I'd say that's the first and foremost one. Um, coming down from there, our offensive coordinator, my first two years, James Franklin, definitely had a big impact on me. And now he's the head coach of Penn State, but uh, he definitely trusted me as a as a young player, a freshman and a sophomore, those first two years, to go out and be a integral part of the offense. Um, even though I'd never played tight end growing, you know, growing up, I, I played here and there, but mainly played quarterback. So to come in, uh, play a new position right away, and and get playing time and in big moments was definitely someone that had trust in me, um, and he helped me grow and just see the offense and how to <clears throat> understand the offense. Um, and then my position coaches, James Jones was my first uh, tight end coach as a freshman. And then uh, Frank Leonard, I'd say, had a big impact on me. He was my tight end coach my sophomore and my junior year. Yes, and he sir. had just come from the Patriots as a scout um, off of their first few Super Bowls they won. Yes, sir. So he was able to really give me an insight into, you know, what life at the next level looked like and kind of helped me realize that, hey, playing in the NFL could be a possibility, but here's what you're going to have to do to catch the eyes of scouts because I just was one. Um Lastly, the uh, 
coach I had at tight end my senior year was Ricky Ronnie. He's now the head coach at Old Dominion University, and he really taught me to see the game uh, from a different light. He played quarterback for Cornell, so definitely a very smart guy. Taught me how to pick up tendencies, uh, break down film more efficiently, understand what stats were important and what weren't, what what what, what ones were not important. Yes, sir. Um, so there's just a lot of good coaches I had around me. And then on the defensive end, there were a lot of great coaches over there that I always loved talking to them when I could, stealing a moment and you know, trying to understand what the defense may be looking at uh, and how they may be trying to stop you. Because if you can understand how they're trying to stop you, you can understand how to attack it and break it down a little bit better. Yes, sir. So uh, going on to later in your career, man, how was that transition from the college level to, to the NFL, man? That, I mean, that was just as much as of a transition as it was to go from high school to college. It was just another another transition, I'd say, on an even bigger scale going to the NFL because now you're talking about being, again, I was in a different city where I knew nobody, totally unfamiliar with the area, no family there. Um, but, you know, again, a lot of great guys that I was around instantly on the team that, you know, I developed a quick bond with and, we're able to get comfortable with just being in a new area, but the life in the NFL of, you know, you no longer have school, you have a lot more freedom. What are you going to do with that free time? You're now a professional, not an amateur athlete. Uh, how are you going to keep developing yourself? How are you going to keep growing? Um, a lot of stuff that I just didn't quite realize uh, about life outside of football, but then also the game itself was just a totally faster um, faster paced game, a lot more complexity, which you would expect, but just, you know, I came in thinking, Oh, I know a lot. I'm, I'm a smart guy, but I just didn't realize what I didn't know until I got there. So definitely. it was a, it was a jump for sure. Definitely, man. So, uh, among the years that you were in the, in the NFL, uh, what was the most difficult part for you as a player in person? I would say my rookie year was pretty tough just coming. Uh, I ended my senior year in, high, in college with a stress fracture and had to have surgery on that. And I was finally cleared to walk the first day of the combine. So I was coming off an injury out of my senior year, not really coming into things healthy was tough. And then just kind of ending senior year, graduating. I graduated in December. Um, in three and a half years from college. So I graduated in December, left, went and started training as soon as I could, as soon as I could get out of the walking boot and off the crutches, um, working on those things. Then things didn't really work out for me in the draft because of the medical situation I was in with my ankle and knee. Yes, sir. Um, so I didn't get drafted. Things just kind of felt uncertain. So overall, I'd say the uncertainty all throughout my rookie year was tough to deal with. Going to the Going to the Tampa Bay Bucks, I thought it was a good move. I didn't make it there. I went to New England for a day, didn't make it there, and then went to Miami. And ended up being there for three years. But that whole first yes, year, sir. that whole first season in New, uh, Miami, definitely just felt like you know I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm not quite myself. I'm not, I don't feel quite settled in. I don't know what's next. I just felt a lot of uncertainty that I let weigh on me. And after that year, I kind of you know, spoke to the other guys on the team, some guys older than me, some the same age, and just realized, hey, that's something that everybody felt at one time. And the more you can just put that aside and focus on what you can help yourself with, and that's just to continue to improve, bring a hardworking attitude, positive attitude every day, you can't be displeased with the results. So definitely. I definitely changed my mindset going into the second year and onward, and that for sure helped and made me feel more comfortable. So that first definitely. year was definitely – tough definitely going uh, undrafted man did that put a chip on your shoulder to prove yourself it, it definitely did because I, I felt like i had i was worthy of being picked i felt like i saw the guys get picked that i felt like i was a, at least comparable to if not better than um but that's neither here nor there i mean there's a lot of guys that came from that draft that have been very good including one for sure hall of famer with rob gronkowski yes sir. um you know, I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunities that I did have. Uh, yeah, I was bitter in the moment about it, but it definitely gave me a chip on my shoulder. And, you know, I had to go out and do my thing and be perfect nearly every rep because guys that are undrafted get very few chances to prove themselves. Yes, so sir. I love, you know, having to work hard and prove yourself. So it just kind of fit in with my personality and background as it is. Definitely. Did you ever get to meet Rob Gronkowski? 
<laughs> yeah, I did. His younger brother actually played for Kansas State. Yes, sir. Um, did he play fullback? So I met him on, so, yeah, I met him on a few occasions as well. He uh, he also was at the combine with me, and then he had. A, there's a thing that guys, if you're injured, you have to come back to the medical recheck, and he had to come back to that as well because he was dealing with a back issue. Yes, sir. Um, so that was one thing he had going on. Uh, I'm trying to think, what else? There was another. There was a couple other instances. Um, and then the one I was in New England, I guess, for a day and a half <laughs> when they signed <laughs> yes, me, sir. but that didn't work out. So I left there. So um, tell me, yeah. t- tell me about that 2013 season and that transition to after that season to another professional career after, after you retired. Yes. Yeah, so after being done in Oakland, I went to. I actually went, I went back home and started, you know, kept training, just waiting for the next opportunity. Kind of thought Oakland would look to re-sign me, but they didn't. Um, wanted to go with some of the younger players they had, which is understandable being a front office person. But I, again, felt like I was better than who they were going with. Um, I signed with the Chicago Bears uh, for training camp. Uh, but before that, I started my own business that I was very passionate about and really was excited about doing those things and started that with my brother and another good friend. And they were having a lot of good success while I went off to training camp with it. So I figured, you know, hey, if this doesn't work out, I know there's something that I could fall into that I'm equally as passionate about. Um, and I really want to work hard with it and keep helping people in that on that platform and uh i've been doing that ever since i've been done yes sir so uh this is my last question for you mr master right. the the trials and tribulations of football man and the lessons that's come with it have you applied all that to your personal life oh for sure i mean i couldn't i couldn't thank the game of football more for all the different you know traits it's instilled in me, things that's made me work through and, uh, you know, just be a better person all around, be more resilient, um, the perseverance, you know, things you got to work through, the hard, you know, the hard workouts, the hard practices, um, the long sprints after, after a long practice, the losses in front of everybody, the public displays of embarrassment of dropping a pass, losing the game for the team, fumbling, getting booed, getting cheered. I mean, all those things that come along with football um, just really have helped me be a better person overall and have been great to bring those traits over to the real world because it makes things a lot easier uh, over there and dealing with the ups and downs that life can present you. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Master, it was a pleasure to interview you. And I'll get this all at. That's all, folks, from our interview today. Stay tuned for more from Sports Talk with Zach Barnett. Thanks again, and God bless.